I've, F25, returned from a month-long trip and my roommate, F22, has moved all her things into my room and has been living there, with no intention of switching back, trigger warning, verbal abuse, intimidation, emotional abuse and manipulation, harassment threats, gaslighting, invasion of privacy, so I moved into this flat about 8 months ago. I met, Lana, online on a roommate website, and we clicked well. She's a bit younger but seemed mature. We quickly agreed to be roommates, a both of us were under time constraints to find a place to live, but have got on really well so far up until this. Our flat is a two-bedroom, and to be frank, my room is clearly the better one. It's bigger and has built-in wardrobes. When looking for the flat, I found the place first on my own and put down a deposit to take it off the market while I found another roommate. The flat was perfect, cheap rent and my aunt manages the property, so I was keen to snap it up before anyone else did. The area it's in is popular so I wasn't really worried about not finding someone to room with. Because of the above and that I was there first, I took the bigger room naturally. When showing potential roommates round including Lana, I was sure to show the smaller room and say, this would be your room. We moved in eight months ago, and it's been happy families. Never heard Lana complain about her room. Because I have about 6x the wardrobe space that she does. I told her she's welcome to store her off-season clothes in there, or whatever she wants to store, as long as she's not popping in every morning to get dressed. She was happy with this. Just over a month ago, I went traveling. Now I'm not the biggest fan of having people in my room, but I told Lana if she had someone stay, her sister, friends from home, they could sleep in my bed. She said thanks, and as she's been such a great roommate and rarely has guests except her boyfriend, I didn't worry at all. I came back yesterday. I was exhausted from the flight and traveling, and just wanted to shower and sleep. As I walked in Lana was in the living room with her boyfriend. We said hello and hugged, had a very quick catch-up, blah blah. Then I dragged my suitcase to my room, opened the door and found it full of stuff that was not mine. I kind of yelled, what the f, and briefly thought I was so jet-lagged I was confused, but opened the door to Lana's room and saw all my stuff. I walked into the living room and asked Lana what was going on and she said, oh sorry, I forgot to mention, we put my stuff in your room just because it's bigger and you weren't here and you said I could use it. I was honestly so tired I could have passed out then. So I probably wasn't in the best state, and told her to move it all back immediately. She said they were in the middle of making dinner and I looked tired so I should have a sleep. Her boyfriend then said, and anyway, you pay the same rent so isn't it fair that you both get the big room at some point. I was getting really frustrated and could feel tears welling up, hysterical from lack of sleep, so I just said, we'll deal with this tomorrow, and it's getting moved back, and then I went to sleep and not my room. I've woken up now and I'm so pissed off. Lana's at work so I can't talk to her but what should I do when she's home? I feel like this is going to turn into an argument, I don't think it'll be as simple as, okay let's swap now you're home. Edit, I've taken the advice of most people on this thread and moved my stuff back. It's taken hours and I'm knackered but I think if I left it another night it would be a real problem. I sent her a text when I was almost done, in case she kicked up a shitstorm and came home, to say, hi Lana. Hope you're having a nice day at work. Just to let you know I'm moving my stuff back into my room, didn't want you coming home and walking into the wrong one. Yes I'm petty. I'll be talking to her when she gets in because this is out of character for her, to the point of it being bizarre. She's never been anything but a model roommate, so I'm gonna give her a chance before we're Denizo. If she wants to be reasonable and have a chat about rent portions I'm happy to do that. She's never had a problem with the rent before, and honestly I've never had uneven rent amounts in any place I've ever lived, whether I had a bigger room or smaller room, but a lot of people here are saying it's the norm so I'm open to talking about it if she's not ridiculous. So as you know, I text Lana to tell her I moved my stuff back. She didn't reply to me, fine whatever, but she didn't kick off so I figured we were okay. I told my aunt what had happened, who was as baffled as all of you, and I told her it was probably all sorted, just keeping her in the loop. I also told my boyfriend who works about 5 minutes down the road. He offered to come round, in case Lana's boyfriend came round, but I told him not to because then we're ganging up on Lana. He insisted on going for a coffee with his mate a couple roads away in case we needed backup. Which is a bit ridiculous but very cute of him, so I did get myself a glass of wine while waiting for Lana, not because I was nervous I just like wine, and she came home. I was sat in the living room and gave her a very cold, hi, when she walked in. She sort of froze. Bag in hand, and her eyes darted between me and my slash not her slash our bedroom door. She blurted, did you do it, and I said, what, move the rooms back. Yeah of course and her eyes went all wide and she dropped her bag and ran into the bathroom. I could hear her talking on the phone so I was like yippee I guess Tom's coming round fun, I heard the door unlock and I was about to go full hulk on how psycho she is, when she came out of the door and stood between our bedrooms. Their doors are adjacent and she just stared between them both breathing heavily. It was really odd. Then I noticed she was crying and getting a bit panicky, so I asked what was going on, she burst into tears and said, OMG he's going to kill me, and just sobbed so yeah it was the boyfriend's idea completely, as a lot of us suspected. She's honestly always been a perfect roommate, which is kind of why I came to this sub. 
If she was generally an a-hole, I would have known how to act, if you know what I mean? Anyway Lana has a bit of a breakdown, and it turns out POS Tom has always been a bit of a POS, very jealous, which I always saw hints of, but Lana never mentioned so I didn't, and has amped up his positioness while I've been away. When I left he just finished school and basically moved in unannounced. And when she'd mentioned he hasn't been home in days, he'd give her the what, don't you love me, I treat you so well, you're so selfish, blah blah, it and refused to move. She showed me the texts he sent her, absolutely horrific stuff, things like, ring me in the next five minutes or we're over, send me a picture of you at your desk with something showing today's date so I know you're at work, just abusive stuff, onto the room, as we guessed, he moved it. He did it while she was at work, which is actually a bit gross thinking of him going through my stuff, and I'm considering somehow implying I have crabs or something he could catch just to make him squirm a bit, but I'll work on it. Lana came home and said what are you doing, he made out it was just temporary and that I wouldn't mind, such a gentleman speaking on my behalf, and he would move it back, and he was doing it for her and she was so selfish etc. When it got a few days before I came back, Lana suggested moving it back, and he completely denied he said that and told her it was her idea to move it and he only did what she told him but it's staying now or she'd be sorry, so basically Tom is a prick and Lana sobbed and apologized and cried and I fed her wine. She didn't want to see Tom. Who obviously assumed he lived there now, so I text him from her phone saying our landlady, my aunt, was coming round for an inspection and staying for dinner after with my family and he couldn't come over tonight. He sent a lot of begging, whiny texts, and then went on the offensive and called Lana a liar, so I rang my aunt, explained everything and had her write us a fake landlord email mentioning the visit, and how she was looking forward to fajitas, because she's an absolute babe and I make good packet fajitas, which we forwarded on to Tom. He left her alone for the rest of the night, apart from a few texts, I'm not entirely sure what we do about Tom. Lana sounds like she wants to break up. Judging from her crying and screaming, I hate him, I hate him, I hate him, into her wine. I think she's scared to though. I checked with her and he doesn't have a key, so that's a relief. I've told my aunt everything and she said she is happy to ban him from the flat, but Lana would need to break up with him first and get all that sorted, thanks everyone for the advice. I know it wasn't the most popcorny update, but hopefully Lana will be okay, and we're going to be doing some girly at this week and avoiding Tom and yeah, God knows what will happen, relevant comments, additional info, comment. Does Tom have a set of keys to the flat? there's only two keys to the flat, mine and Lana's. I gave mine to my mom while I was away in case she needed to pop in for me, but she never did. Lana has one and she says she didn't give it to Tom at any point, she just buzzed him in. I'm going to speak to my aunt and see what she reckons about changing the locks, I'd need to verify it with her beforehand anyway. I don't see that there's any way Tom could have a copy, but you never know. Comment. Is the roommate's name on the lease, her name is on the contract, equal to mine. The deposit I paid was a holding fee to take the property off the market which was later deducted from my half of the actual deposit, so she doesn't owe me any money that I'm hoping the boyfriend will not be round when she comes home. She's been a reasonable person for the seven months prior to this, so I can't help but think he's influenced her a bit. I'm very curious to know how much he's been staying over. Comment. If the lease has a limit on guests, he is 100% not moving in after school, not a hope in hell. I advertised for one roommate, I wrote no couples in capital letters on the ad, it's not happening. Our lease has a guest clause, something like no longer than three weeks over a three-month period? I'm not sure, I'll need to look at it. It's likely that both of our boyfriends have stayed longer than that over the eight months. And the landlord has never had an issue with them. If he starts staying every night I will be bringing this up though, update two months later, so shortly after my last post Lana broke up with Tom. She was quite scared to do it, because he's a psycho, and it took two weeks between the last post and the actual breakup. During that time she didn't let him come round or see her. Luckily she remembered that Tom had never had chicken pox as a kid, so we pretended my nephew had caught chicken pox and had to stay with us because my brother's wife had never had it and couldn't risk getting shingles. It worked luckily, and he stayed away. She told her family and close friends about what he'd been like. In case he contacted them to get in touch with her and lied about what happened, and then texted him saying she wanted to break up. Well he blew the F up. Called her every name under the sun, switched back to apologizing and saying she was the love of his life, then said she'd never find someone like him, then he would die without her then he wanted to kill her, then they were soulmates. It was insane. He started messaging me too, telling me I was an evil bitch who had ruined his perfect wife, lolk then, and as predicted. Her family and friends got messages too. We both turned our phones off to ignore it and just watched TV. Later I briefly switched mine on, where I had a lot of messages from my friends telling me to block some guy on my social media. It was Tom calling me everyone's imaginative combination of the C word he could think of all over my, public, Instagram page. There were even a few racial slurs which was odd because we're both white but okay. Lana had already blocked him on everything but silly me forgot to make my insta private, the next day he rang Lana's office, she was so embarrassed, it was awful, to tell her he was driving down to our flat. She rang me, and I rang my aunt, who you remember manages the property, who told us it was time to call the police. We filed a report about Tom and they said to update us on the situation. 
In the UK you need to go to court to actually get a restraining order, so we haven't as such, but the evidence is all there and documented if we need to go that far, the police rang Tom, at our request, told him they'd seen the messages and to turn his car around because if he turned up at our door he'd be arrested. Police officers here are amazing, can I just say. Tom managed to it himself hard enough to not show up after that, so we were fine for a week. Then the post came. Tom started sending letters. Threats and soppy I love you shit. Flowers. Then a pizza that we had to pay for, we were actually hungry so we ate it. He signed us up to a magazine subscription. It was bizarre. We went to the police again. They filed everything but Lana didn't want to go to court. I don't blame her, she was incredibly stressed by the whole thing, so two weeks ago I took my aunt and mother out to dinner. I told them both about the situation and my goddess of an aunt had an idea. She manages about 30 properties, not just the one we live at, as had a few that were unoccupied now, with school finishing. She told me she would show us round all the two bedrooms she had, and we could live in any of them for the same rent we pay now, and just transfer over our deposit slash fees, as long as there were no damages to deduct and we helped do a deep clean to get it ready for the next tenant. We found one within a five-minute drive that's just as lovely and, to anyone concerned about the previous rent dispute, has equally sized bedrooms, so we moved. Which is why the last two weeks have been manic, but we're settled in now. Tom has now been informed that we've moved, because the stuff he sent since has been returned. Lana and I are completely no contact with him, and anyone who visits us is sure not to pass on our address to Tom. Also I apologize to Lana about the issue with paying the same amounts of rent. She said she had never had a problem with it, and said that's how she had always done it through uni and with other roommates. She refused to take any money from me but I've decided I will be funding the weekly flat wine sessions for the future, it's been a long long month and even though my traveling tan has faded, things are great now. Thanks for all your advice before guys, even the ones I didn't agree with, and let's all pray to baby Jesus that I have a calmer living situation from now on.